I am Slick Nick, your personal certified Enneagram coach. Welcome to this little series I'm doing where we look at ultimately the fear, the basic fear of each Enneagram and understand how illogical that fear ultimately is. Now, granted, when it's my turn, I'm going to be just as honest as I am for all the other numbers when when we get to seven, but right now we're on number two. So we're going to look at what do if you ask me as a certified Enneagram coach, what do twos fear? If you're, if you're the helper, what do you fear? Uh, when I, the way I describe it is I feel that twos fear not feeling loved or being loved. So they're the helpers. They're wanting to help everybody. They're, they're showing all that love that they want to receive because they're always asking that question, always have doubt. But am I loved? Do they love me? Is, is kind of that question that that's how I perceive twos. I will say though, in, in real life, I've assessed so many people uh, as, as a certified Enneagram coach, but not a whole lot of twos. I don't know a whole lot of twos in real life. Barely talk to a few in, in life. But let's go ahead and the rest of us, the, the, the non-twos in the crowd here. Let's just think about that out loud because that's what this series is all about, this little series here is. What must it be like for a two to think, am I loved? Do they love me? I want, I want people to love me. So it's funny because for me, like I get it. I have people in my life that love me and I know that. And it's important to me that I communicate that to them and they communicate it to me. That's important for everybody, you know? But the reality is not everybody's gonna love me. And I think for me being a seven, that's easy for me to accept. Certain people may not like me. I'll do my best, but they just may not like me and I'm okay with that. Uh, I, on my end, as far as I know, I like everybody, but I don't need people to love me and I don't need people to like me. And so I think this is the logic I'm speaking into you. If you are a two, uh, part of your growth is to accept possibly that you can't win them all. Not everyone's going, going to love you. And that's part of life. So you focus on the people who, who do love you and who are worth loving and know, you know what, as long as I got these people in my life and I know that that love is expressed, I love them, they love me. I don't need the whole world to love me. I only need a certain closer group of people to love me. Because in reality, that's how life actually works. There's a, you've heard it said before, you can probably name on one hand the number of people that if you call them in the middle of the night, they'd pick up the phone and they'd, show up to your house and help you that, with whatever thing you need, right? That's the reality of it, especially people that you carry with you your entire life. So what I think it's important is to remind you of what your growth Enneagram is. So as a two, the best version of you uh, is a four. Uh, and this is something that fours are naturally inclined to do. Uh, so to admit and accept your painful feelings, including anger and sadness and loneliness, so it's, it's important to recognize that that exists, to not just hold it in because two specifically are known for repressing uh, actually shame. And I think that's part of where that am I love, do you love me uh, comes from. So as far as being more expressive about that. And so, you know, and I, I, I can see the paradox. I can, I can see the problem. I think a lot of times for twos is that maybe the people that love them are not very good at expressing it are not very good at saying, I love you, I appreciate you, I'm glad you're in my life, you know? I'm a seven, I'm very expressive, I'm very verbal. I will tell you that I love you. I will tell you what I'm thinking. But what I've also seen as a pattern, that twos often end up with eights or, a, or even a nine. Someone who may not be that expressive, so you're just trying to draw it out of them. But ultimately, it's a matter of knowing that not everyone is going to love you no matter what you do. But it's also your responsibility to have that conversation with those people who do love you and say, look, this is who I am. I need you to hear, I need to hear you say that you love me. I tell you all the time, I do all these things to show you that I love you. But I just want to let you know, like, I have this thing inside of me that, like, I need to feel loved. And it's not that you don't love me, but here's the way I need to see that love expressed to me. Could you help me out? And that takes humility to do that. But I think that is probably the best way to come to terms with the fear of not being loved. I would love to hear what you have to say. Your comments could belong right here.